sacred honors language arts. This, I believe, an investigation in individual cultural identities, read and published by Victor Xu. The cracked glass, a half cup of wine. With my soft flesh shoved against the icy concrete floorboards, I am among the plethora of toddlers deprived of the comfort of familiarity. A suffocating gas I must learn to live with, and this, I believe, is the cause for my survival. The withers of time marked by the heresies of rain has shaped my cracked glass, each incident materializing into a blood-red drop of blood. Isolation, now conquered by the goal of survival, transcends into inky fear. I am transported to the stained glass of elementary education and see with a callow yet refined eyepiece. The night was thick with yellow fog, tasking me with the mission of overcoming a geographical examination. Hopes of success and fear for failure lodged me onto the road for unprecedented study. Now this emotion is smooth, worn with abrasions of practice, and I have learned to digest balance, to overcome pressure. It's said that thunder never strikes in the same place twice. But on some days, it's my loving patience against the gods. It's four o'clock sharp, and I dance towards the lukewarm swimming pool with vigor. Although bathed in a mood escalating sunlight, I raced against the ticking clock to prevent tardiness. Bam! And I'm down on the unforgiving asphalt, pain radicating through my veins, calling out as if my tendons were stapled into my bones. But the pain is something I endure and soon forget. The ride back, I stare moodily out the window, the suburban haze addicting my senses. In trance, I am unable to respond to stealthy, to a stealthy sliding motion of my phone. When the automobile growls to a halt, the doors pop open and out it drops. In a taunting slow motion, the gadget plummets into rainwater, a cruel reminder that weather can play its drama arbitrary. My patience utterly crumbled. I dashed from my door and slam it shut. The phone unexpectedly buzzes. It's a ringtone of the anthem. Put your left foot in. Put your left foot out. Cut by my answering. The cracked voice of my blossom buddy floods me like a storm. And by the end, I had learned that he was departing from New Zealand. Feeling a certain degree of melancholy which sucked a hole in my chest. I wanted to molecularly burst. But a few seconds later, just as I was beginning to contemplate unleashing my discomfort vocally, my little cousin enters the room. I sprang towards the sudden sound, prayed for an excuse to outlet my anger, but only stares back blankly. And I remember. He is autistic, lost in an unbreakable world. It's then, with a flashback of Charlie Gordon, a mental invalid captain captivity from society, do I remember that what I had written about acrostic poetry, spelling out Charlie. Life is created unequal. Callow in the soul, hollow in the brain, always a true stick at heart, relieving others of pain, lost in a world indisputably unique to himself. Each word brings thought, each thought brings strength. In that one moment, enlightened by my own hunger for perfection, I embraced and tightly. To everyone who has encountered turbulent storms, they crush our senses, rendering our own operating systems unresponsive. But patience is a virtue, because there are always people out there in greater suffering that must swallow their disadvantages. I took a deep breath and looked around with revived energy. My heart beat calm to rekindle my spirits and my confidence, time unwinding my sores. One line is extrapolated from my memories. A heart of diamond sits in utter silence, unperturbed by the recurrent times, symbolizing that because rewinding time is impossible, hardening a heart to oversee the grits of life and instead growing by giving away love is true strength. After all, it has been said that yesterday is a path, tomorrow is a mystery, but today is a gift. That is why it is called the present. And this, I have learned ever since, is the art of learning to grasp onto life, but also to release it and avoid suffocation. Today, while dining at a roadside restaurant, the kind with the flickering neon signs matching the cracked utensils, I finally see my own reflection. Out of the blue, a glass of wine is tipped over, and I see its contents are still half full. 
but contradicting my opinion is a stouty woman that appears out of air, screeching, You just crack this cup, and look, your wine's now half empty. I'm not paying for more. Somewhere along the way, I have learned to survive by repressing my fears, relighting my hope, seeing life as half full, not half empty. For life is not measured by the breaths we take, but by the moments that take our breath away.